Hey everyone, welcome back. Originally for this video I planned on talking about my robot snowblower, but as you can see, it's not quite in a finished state. Unfortunately, some things have come up that have gotten in my way, as usual. The other morning I woke up to find the latest version of my internal gear pump making a funny noise, and when closer inspected I found out that the pump itself was seized, the motor had overheated and was just spinning inside the drive coupling. After testing, I come to the conclusion that the motor had bit the dust. So I grabbed one of my spare motors and it also bit the dust. I tried my spare pump and it ran for a short period of time and then also did the same thing. I can't actually find anything wrong with the second pump. It hadn't been run very much and isn't seized. It just seems that the motors stall, overheat, and then burn out whatever's left of them. Now I got all these motors from scrap printers like desk jet printers so I can't really expect that much from them. However my supply of them has pretty much dwindled down to nothing. So I need to source another motor, preferably one that's efficient and cheap. Before I get into that, for anyone who hasn't seen my previous pump and heat pump heat bank videos, you should click the little link that's going to pop up right here. And, for everyone who's caught up, a quick update on what I'm currently doing. It turns out the heat pump can't keep up and the losses through the loss of insulation and the window not being sealed properly added up to a net loss in heat energy. So I ended up just going over to resistors or heat elements and tossing them inside the heat bank itself. Figured sand's a nice place to put a heat element. This seems to work to some effect, at least on sunny days, to help keep this room warm. With my pumps failing, I was forced to fast track an idea I had a long time ago into a prototype rather quickly, so there's a few flaws that I'll kind of refine as I go. The original concept I had was to have a fan, just a standard computer fan, driving a pump that I could have mounted right to the heatsink, which would eliminate the need for extra motors and drives. Also, PC fans are usually rather efficient and relatively inexpensive. Since they don't have a lot of torque, I come up with this gear reduction and mounted it to a computer fan. Just starting with an 80 millimeter fan because I figured they're kind of middle of the road power and abundant. So as you've seen before, I already have one of these pumps running, but I'm gonna assemble another one as the original one is made up of a mix match of used and unused parts and it's kind of loose and doesn't move very much fluid or at least not as much as I was hoping it would. This version is pretty straightforward and doesn't require any machined parts. To start, I glue the gear to the top of the fan motor hub. I just use super glue, something thin that doesn't displace too much to keep the piece flat on the hub is probably the best though. Now for the frame. You can mount this with the standard self-tapping hardware that comes with most of these fans or you can use M4 screws, the threads are in the design. In this version, I have the plate designed to work for both an 80 and 90 millimeter fan. For the sake of everyone who doesn't have access to a machine shop, I'm going to use just a straight 6 millimeter tube. You could use shafting, probably better to use shafting, but these are stainless steel straws which work well in the environment that I'm going to be using these in. Once the shaft is cut to length, I'm going to press the gear on or hammer the gear on. And once that's on, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue just to make sure it stays where it's placed. While doing this, I'll check the end distance from the gear to the faceplate with the faceplate to make sure it clears. On this version of the pump housing, I've moved the seal to the inside so that while printing upwards, I get a better groove, which helps seal. Before assembly, I also cleared all the holes with a 6mm drill just to make sure they were good and smooth. Now for the reduction gear, that's just pressed on as well. You could glue this on, but I leave it unglued. It seems to grab tight enough, just in case I want to disassemble it later. I'm not going to cover the rest of the pump assembly. You can check that out in my previous videos. At any rate, here's the finished unit. Now I'm going to strip the leads and put a plug on the end of it and test it out. Well, turns out I didn't test this fan before, and it's no good. It barely turns without anything hooked to it. After printing another gear, swapping over to another fan, we're in business. Everything's still a little bit stiff, it's got to break in a little bit, so I run the pump with no faceplate just to kind of let it break in. 
After about half a day of running it open, I bolted it together, then slowly put screws in it. Again, there's not a lot of excess power here to burn in friction, but I'm pumping water, so that's a win, I guess. Here we are at about the 12 hour point and I'm pumping about twice the amount of water, which is good, but not what I was hoping on the tighter pump gears. So hopefully it'll speed up a little bit more. And here we are at about the three day point and it seems to be as smooth as it's gonna be. There's a noticeable amount of pressure compared to the last time and it runs fairly quietly now. It still makes somewhat of a pulsing noise, but I think that's just the way the motor fires or turns on the coils. It's not really the smoothest thing. It's meant to have a little bit more free weight and a little less drag, you know, when driving a fan. Then I begin to wonder, for efficiency's sake, if I geared it down more while increasing the volume of the pump. Theoretically, that should increase efficiency. However, there seems to be a minimum efficiency RPM when it kind of stops bypassing or overcomes the amount of fluid bypassed in the pump. So it's hard to say how this will work. With the larger volume concept, I also decided to try and run without a seal. So I made a pump housing without a seal, but I made it longer so that the motor and everything will be above the water and hopefully it'll pump a little bit more water and be a little bit more efficient. It will obviously leak out the top, so there's a vent hole, so hopefully the water doesn't get all the way to the motor. But most of these fans are slightly water resistant, if not waterproof anyways, and that is an option if purchasing a fan. Here I'm doing a really rough test of the head height that the pump manages to achieve. And here's the previous successful pump built out of mostly parts left over with a new housing. Adjusted for the actual height of the pump, there's not a huge amount of difference between the two. While messing with another fan, I realized if you twist the little thyristor apart and put the contacts together, the fan runs at full blast all the time with no thermal control. So that's useful, at least in this application. Just a quick load test, I want to squeeze the tube off and I want to hear the motor load up. Unfortunately that doesn't happen which means the pump's bypassing internally. To overcome the internal bypassing and leakage through the shaft with no seal, I added 13 millimeters to the length of the volume on all of the parts, which in theory should solve the problem, however with the added drag, the fans don't seem to drive it and I currently don't have any that are powerful enough to drive it. I have looked around to see what kind of fans are available. Delta has a few that might do the job, but buying a fan for this purpose kind of defeats the purpose of the whole idea. The idea was to take advantage of scrap parts and make them useful for something else, which might still be a thing, but in this current application, it doesn't seem to be working very well. All in all, I ended up with two working pumps but they were used with war-in parts. The application of 3D printing seems to be a little inaccurate for such tight tolerances. After wearing in with more power available, they seem to run really nicely. But without the power available to cut the plastic to fit perfectly with wear, this isn't really doable. I did, however, come up with this stack of gear reductions that go on a fan. Now in application, I would make this a little bit smaller, but just for testing purposes, this has a decent amount of torque and could be used for something with low load. I don't really know what I would use it for currently. If you got any ideas, let me know. Maybe I'll work on it one day. I'm currently using the gear reduction stack to try and break this pump in, but that's going to take a very long time. In the meantime, since I'm a little bit discouraged with this fan motor project, I started working on my own brushless motors. Just a simple design. It doesn't seem to be working yet. I think I need more magnets. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here and I'm kind of going to figure it out by trial and error. Once I have a decent understanding and a working prototype of how brushless motors are supposed to work, I'll probably bring it out into the machine shop and make everything out of metal so it works a little bit more efficiently. The other concept I had was putting set screws inside the middle of the coils to work as the core, but I don't know how well that would work. Overall, I went on this tangent for about two weeks and didn't really come up with much. I did have a replacement pump for the one application, but it doesn't work the best and probably isn't going to be very good once it wears in properly. However, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Not much you can do about it. 
I'm sure somewhere I learned something from this experience and will probably apply it somewhere down the road once I realize that. For now, I'm hoping to get back to the snowblower robot and, you know, get a couple other things done. I'll be working on the Bratis motor in the background and hopefully that'll be the video after the snowblower video. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. At any rate, that's all I got for you today. So if you enjoyed it, click like, subscribe, do the whole social media thing, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.